Today on Over a Coffee, I talked to Sarah May, the Netflix director of acquisitions and co-productions for France, about how the streaming platform has kept the things on the road despite the COVID-19 restrictions, and how the French content is taking Europe by storm. Hi, Sarah. It's great to have you here. How are you doing? Hi. Good, good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. How long have you been working for Netflix, and how did you happen to become the director for acquisition and co-production for both France and Italy. Tell me more about this. I've um, been almost three years now uh, at Netflix. I've spent most of my career in um, the trade of films, uh, selling and buying uh, on the international market, French films and, uh, and foreign films uh, acro across the board for the past 15 years and, and, and came to Netflix to, to do that more specifically for France and Italy, yes. Where did you get that interest for TV slash cinema in the first place? I wanted to uh, find a job where science and arts are combined. And France is, is, has been at the confluence of, of, of that um, ecosystem of buying and selling uh, cinema for the past, for many years. Uh, so it seemed... Um, logic to uh, to come in and 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 build that trade uh, in france before we we move uh further into netflix uh so so you've said it yourself you you've been working as um in tf1 and m6 which are probably two of the biggest uh television channels um in france so how did those previous experiences translate into what you are doing now uh in netflix being at uh, m6 or tf1 for eight years um, distributing films um, uh, led me to understand, you know, where lie the interest of of our current partners, uh, because TF1 is a, a current par is a partner of Netflix. Um, how they think, how they they come to appreciate um, local language um, TV or film, and and how um, the, the distribution of, of of those films work for them. I'd like to go back to the partnership with Stefan. I'm curious, how does it work? How do you work with like more local um, channels? Stefan has been a uh, historically a partner of French cinema. At Netflix, we're becoming part of this ec ecosystem. Ho hopefully, in a few years from now, we'll be will be considered as a historical partner of French cinema. And obviously, to answer your question, we can't do that alone. Um, and it's with it's it's often by partnering with these these guys who've been around for a long time and who have been partners of the of the talents and the producers for a long time that we will uh, make this happen for us as well. If we talk about France specifically now, what is the Netflix presence in France like these days? It was always an ambition of Netflix to be um, to be a part of, of 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 this ecosystem as any other partners. Um, and so the French office was the obvious first step. Now it's been a year, um, you know, following the AVMS uh, obligations, it will give us uh, w uh, more opportunities to, to be the, that partner that we want uh, for the French talents. And if I understand this right, the teams are growing now in Paris, right? Things are pretty good for the French team. Things are pretty good. Yeah, we, you know, even uh, through COVID, we uh, managed to uh, maintain like 20 uh, new shows. None of our, sh of our shows that started during COVID uh, got shut down. And, and how did you, did you make that happen? Did you have to be, I don't know, extra cautious? Did it entail, I don't know, more money to make that happen? I don't know if it's about more money, more about a collective global ambition to, for the company to come together and find ways to keep those shows going. So it was us thinking globally on how uh, every, everywhere in Europe, not just in France, but everywhere in Europe, everywhere in, in Asia, everywhere in the United States, how we could uh, keep going, keep those crews working healthily and safely. So the, the health protocol was put in place at a global scale. And um, yeah, it, it worked out, thankfully. And what lessons um, can be learned from, from this? Are you going to keep things from the, the pandemic stage? Are you going to still implement those new habits? 
will keep thinking that way. We'll keep, uh, you know, obviously having the employees' uh, health uh, in mind first. Um, there's, there's, there's no nothing to gain in uh, in in pushing uh, those boundaries and uh, everything to gain in keeping the 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 crews safe for sure. And and I have to say that it has not stopped you from doing great successes, right? I'm thinking here about Lupin, Emily in Paris. For France, it has actually been really enjoyable shows, I think, in France, uh, in spite of the whole situation, right? We had um, a, a few uh, really, really uh, um, great successes uh, this year. Uh, Lupin, obviously, with 70 uh, million uh, uh, members seeing the show in, in, in less than a month was just amazing. What is your template for commissioning content in France and is there any recipe? We realized um, with shows like Bal Perdu, with shows like Bronx uh, on the film front um, that uh, there was a, a real, real appetite, not just locally, but globally uh, and at a European scale. We're not the, the mainstream films that were that were going into theaters. I'm thinking about action films to, to give a good example. And obviously we're going to we're going to pursue these uh, as long as our members uh, want, want them we're gonna we're gonna bring that to them outside of that I want to say it's always about the story it is true that we're driven about the story about the the, vo the voices that tell that story whether it's a, a confirmed talent or a new talent uh, as long as this story is is can drive emotion and and is local the more it drives the an emotion that is close to the human, close to a reality, the more it travels, which is which is something that we will always look forward to do. We know the boom that um, streaming platforms has occupied, obviously, with the, the pandemic. So does it mean that those platforms are now taking the lead? We're not there to replace anyone. We're not there to replace pay TVs. We're not there to replace theaters. It's not our ambition, and we are, we're firm believers that um, all these ways of bringing entertainment to the world is, is or complementary or additive. Um, again, our obsession is not about uh, uh, market share or taking over. It's about what are the best stories, because our entire business is built on the belief that bringing the best stories, the most entertaining stories, the most emo emotional stories, finding them and putting them on Netflix is the best way um, to, 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 to build that consumer joy, that member joy that we're seeking uh, all the time. So no, the, uh, yeah, that's the sole ambition, really. It's not to replace anyone. <laughs> You're dealing with both the French market and the Italian market, right? Uh, so I'm just wondering, is there any specifics? I mean, I'm a French national, so what, what Netflix show uh, is more um, inclined to, 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 to be liked by French nationals compared to the Italians? We're very um, sensible to, to the DNA of, of the local film, of the local TV series, meaning that it needs to drive a, a local story. You know, for example, in France, Um, when you think of a film like Banlieusard or when you think of a, a series like Lupin, um, there's nothing more French in a way than these shows, but it travels. In Italy, um, series like Subura uh, or, uh, or the film like um, The Life Head with Sophia Loren is 100% uh, Italian DNA, but for some reason, Because I think the, the, those those emotions are so relatable uh, to other countries, to other people around the world, that they end up traveling, which is a bit mind-boggling or can seem contradictory. But this is this is where we found stories re resonate the most. So, what about the the very French Frenchness you you, you mentioned? Uh, how does it go on the the international uh, scene, on the European scene? We have a, a culture of cinema that uh, has been traveling for decades. Um, we have a culture of TV also that has been traveling for decades. Um, so this is nothing new. 
um, what we can bring to that as Netflix is is an, a gigantic echo chamber. It's like um, a case de résonance that makes it that more much more resounding globally. And that Frenchness is what people who who have been um, and are touched by French stories are looking for always. We've forayed into genres that weren't um, much um, uh, produced before. I want, I'm thinking of action films, French action films. We realized with La Terre et le Sang by Julien Leclerc, uh, by Bal Perdu, uh, and with uh, Bronx, um, that um, this specific genre um, in countries like in other European countries like Spain or Italy, or have welcomed these French action shows um, that are more based on characters, on intrigue, rather than uh, like uh, on, on spe super expensive special effects. So I want to say that that French action touch is becoming uh, a really good uh, vector of French entertainment for our members, definitely. Thank you very much. I've got one final question, and that's coming from the Netflix binge watcher that I am. Can you give us a hint on what's coming up next for, for France, for the French audience? We've got three new films um, coming out um, that we're very proud of in 2020, and also Lupin Part Two that everyone was expecting. Also, we're bringing back uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme to the screen in a action comedy that you should see at some point uh, mid, mid this year. So all of this, super, very much looking forward to that. Sounds really exciting indeed. Well, thank you very much, Sarame, for, for the lovely chat. And I guess we're all looking forward to, to see what you have in store for us. Thank you.